Well, hey, everybody, if you know somebody who's a fixer, oh, man, I'm sure you have felt invalidated before, right? I mean, fixers, oh, they're just, they love to hear other people's problems. It's like they're chomping at the bit just to hear your issues, to hear your problems so that they can find a solution for you. And if you're a fixer, well, this is going to be a good video for you too, because you're going to have a better understanding of maybe how other people feel about your fixing. Well, let's talk today about being on the receiving end of a fixer, right? And I like to call them starting gate fixers, because if you know a starting gate fixer, that means whenever you activate their fixer, they're ready to pounce and they come out with very powerful solutions like they and they tell you, you should do this and you should do that. Yeah, that's not a really good strategy. If you want some friends, if you want some friends, you're not going to be a starting gate fixer. They're also analyzers and advisors, and they love to do that. They're fixers, analyzers, and advisors, and my cell phone just went off, so I need to turn that off. Eh. All right. What is a starting gate fixer? There's somebody who most likely brought some stuff into their adult life, I myself was a starting gate fixer and, and still am. I've just learned how to manage it a lot better. Why did I become a starting gate fixer? Because of my mom. I was a rescuer fixer with my mother. You know, she had issues with my dad when I was growing up and who, who slid into that role of fixer, you know, trying to help my mom feel better. And I was very codependent. That was me. And so I take that into my adult life and I try to fix everybody else. I'm, I'm always eager. I was always eager to hear other people's problems because I could fix them. You know, that's what I did with my mom. All right. So maybe you have some of that in your background. Not sure. But a starting gate fixer is somebody who is, again, they can, they can see and they're, they'll, they're going to put you. I, 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 I got to learn how to talk better here. They will put you in their crosshairs the minute that you say you've got an issue. They can smell problems from a mile away, okay? They can do that. Starting gate fixers are very powerful. They're very tuned in to problems because they get activated and it makes them feel better about themselves when they jump in to fix, analyze, or advise. I'm not going to go into the weeds here about what makes a fixer, analyzer, advisor, and if you can relate to this yourself or you have a partner who's like this, listen to the rest of this video before I move forward. Come on, man. I'm trying to I'm trying to establish motivated minds a little bit. I've been I've been dropping some videos I think have been helpful. So hit the subscribe button. Give me a little comment. And you know what? Hit the like button. And I really do want you to get that notification. I'm trying to drop more of these. So do me a favor, okay? And hit the subscribe button, the like button, and, and leave me a comment, okay? Would you do that for me? All right. Now, you may not agree with me, and that's totally okay because I really don't give a crap. But here's the thing. I've been in private practice for a little while. I work with people. I've done. I've worked with a lot of couples and individuals who struggle with these starting gate roles because there are others. I'm just talking about the fixer today, the analyzer, the advisor, all right? So if you do disagree with me, hey, throw that in the comments. I won't take it personally. Say whatever you want to say. Every once in a while, I have some people in the comments. They say some weird stuff, and I'm always like, what do you mean? I don't even know what they mean. They're so, but anyway, so here's the thing, and I need to stop saying so. Next, how do they impact others? What is the impact that a starting gate rescuer, fixer, controller has? Oops, did you hear what I just said? Rescuer, that's another face of the fixer. It's a rescuer and a controller. They tend to be those two things as well. Fixer, rescuer, controller. Interesting, isn't it? All right, let's talk about the impact. The main impact they have is they invalidate and not, and they don't know it, right? They, Because they're doing things out of the goodness of their heart. They want to help you. They want to take you out of the pit. When they sense, when they walk by and they see you in the pit of despair, what do they want to do? They want to pull you out of the pit. They want to bring you up here where things are better, where, there's, where it's more sunny and the air is better. They don't want you in the pit. What they'll do is they'll, climb into the pit and instead of sitting in the pit with you and having a conversation meaning trying to understand where you're coming from they'll grab you by the arm or the leg if you're really don't want to get out of the pit because you're really struggling you know maybe you are in a place where you're having a really bad day and they'll grab you by the leg and they're like no we're getting up here we're coming up here and they may even manage to get you out of the pit and get you to the top over here where the air is better but guess what They've probably broken your leg in the process by dragging you up out of the pit, right? You're both not better for it because there's injuries all around. They may have done their job, 
but they did it while injuring you. That's an important thing to understand with a starting gate fixer, rescue, or controller. All right. Now, I think I mentioned a minute ago, I got the fixer from my mother. I tried to rescue her a lot growing up because she had some issues with my dad, big issues with my dad. And so I slid right into that role, nice and comfortable role for me to start rescuing and becoming codependent. Yeah, codependency. And it just created a lot of problems later in my life. Okay. All right. Um, how do we deal with the rescuer, fixer, controller, i.e., fixer, analyzer, advisor. How do we deal with these people? Well, it's like everything else, and you're probably going to get sick of me. Please don't leave this video when I say this because you probably want to. Boundaries. It always comes down to healthy boundaries. Don't you just want the person to just understand that they're being an idiot right now? Like, what? stop being a dickhead. That's all I'm saying. And if you can stop being that, we'll be okay. I won't have to confront you. I won't have to say anything to you. So it feels unfair, and it is. But what are we going to do? We have to stand up for ourselves. We have to advocate for ourselves. And we have to share with this person, listen, when you try to find solutions for me, when I'm not in a good place and you try to find these solutions, I understand, you know, you care for me. I understand you love me. I understand you want the best for me. But when you do that, it, it actually puts a lot of pressure on me. And it makes me feel like I'm not good enough. And it, it makes me feel hopeless and helpless for myself. And that's not what I want to feel. What I really need from you, and what I really want from you, is to, is to sit with me and just let me know that you're with me. Don't worry. I'll find my way out of the pit, okay? I know how to get out of the pit. But what I need you to do is just sit with me and tell me that you're with me. And don't tell me you understand. Do not tell me you understand because you do don't. And that doesn't make me feel better any, at all either. What I need you to do again is just be with me. Tell me you're with me. Tell me you're, you're going to be with me. You can even get out of the pit if you want. And just let me know that you're ready to talk and help me when I'm ready. Would you do that for me, please? I just gave you a script that I usually give my clients in my office. So hopefully that will be helpful if you need to use it. But that's what we usually need, right? That's a, that's a communication boundary that we need to have with partners or people who are starting gate fixers, analyzers, advisors, rescuers, fixers, controllers. The other thing is they can make us really feel like victims actually. They can stick us in a victim role where we always, we're always looking up at them, right? We're always looking up, we're always looking up. And what happens when we're always looking up at them? We kind of get a crick in our neck, don't we? We get sore in our neck and eventually we get sick and tired of it, right? And at some point we'll probably say something like, you know what? Your stuff stinks too, all right? Why don't we ever talk about your stuff? How come you're always trying to talk about my stuff like I'm always the problem? Am I making some sense here? I hope I am. All right, well, that's all I want to give you today. I, I hope that's helpful. Understanding why sometimes fixers, rescuers, controllers can assume that identity and how they impact others and things that we can do to advocate for ourselves more when we do feel like we're being fixed, controlled, analyzed, advised, etc. So just remember this, the person who's doing it is most likely they have a loving heart toward you and they don't want to make you feel those things, but that's what's happening in the process. We need to advocate for ourselves with communication and establishing healthy boundaries. Okay. I hope that was helpful. I will see you next week.